Hello and welcome to Lorbeck Luxury Cars. I'm Harry and today on this edition of the Friday Drive, I have this very subtle car. No, it's not a Mini and no, it's not a Smart Car. It's a Daimler. More specifically, a Daimler DS420. Widely acknowledged for being the very last of the coach built cars ever, the Daimler DS420 marked the end of an era in the automotive world where the cars could be as unique as their owners. So let's get in and see how the old girl fares in this modern world of solar panels, electric cars and iPhones. And as we trundle along in this car, it becomes immediately apparent that I'm exactly where I'm meant to be in this car. The amount of space in the back makes it a fair to extend and will base still cramped. And I should note, we test drove one of those in one of the previous Fido drives. And if you're a particularly popular oligarch back in 1987, You've got these little dicky seats here so you can take a bunch of your nearest and dearest. How nice! But all of this luxury and opulence hides a dark and sad story about the end of a golden age of motoring. For anyone not familiar with the name Daimler, jump on Google and you'll discover that they are one of the oldest names in the motoring industry. Founded in 1896, Daimler was the longest British motor mark ever. A pioneer in the automotive, aeronautical and military world, bring to market innovations that laid the groundwork for the cars we know today, and perhaps a little less happily, the first car ever to be involved in a fatal car crash in Britain back in 1899 in a Daimler 6 horsepower. Not really hard to see, I guess. A flourishing company. In 1902, Daimler was issued the Royal Warrant to provide motor vehicles to the Royal Family until Rolls-Royce nicked it from them in the 1950s. Stuck in an old world approach to building cars, Daimler was bought and sold by a number of parent companies, but most famously Daimler was owned by Jaguar and their parent companies from 1960. It was at that point on Daimler was distinguished by being the luxury Jaguar mark, much like Lexus is to Toyota or Infiniti is to Nissan today. However, as the Jaguar brand cachet increased, the demand for Daimler decreased. So to be creative, Daimler looked to other avenues to separate themselves from their parent company, which neatly brings us to the DS420. The DS was based on the Jaguar Mark 10, albeit longer and with different body panels made by Van & Plaat. Plus the mechanicals were largely the same, including the brilliant 4.2 litre straight 6 in its 1987 version. Only lightly updated during the years, the DS420 found little favour with well-heeled private buyers, who in the 60s were more interested in owning cars to drive themselves, rather than the jazz era fashion of chauffeur driven motoring. So as a result, in the 24 years of production, only 4,141 examples were ever built. That means there was a production time of less than one every two days. And because the market for this model was so limited, only heads of state or their state representatives could justify the amount needed to buy one of these cars or find a need to have one at all. But that was then and this is now. So why might you own a car like this in today's world? It's a good question. So let's pull over kick the driver out of his seat and find out what's what. But first things first, we've got to get to the driver's compartment and to say it's a bit of a walk would be an understatement. Still going, still going, still going. So let's get ourselves in. It's a little bit on the crab side, I mean, that's what you get with the partition. But anyway, we'll soldier on, so let's see how she drives. The first thing I noticed when I got into this car is how remarkably modern it feels. And I guess it's really not a surprise. I mean, even though the car did play tricks on me, it looks like a much older car. The reality is it's not that old. And the proof is in the way that it goes, stops, and really handles. It's, it's phenomenal, to be honest. <laughs> and everywhere you look in this car, there's little bits of attention to detail and just every sort of little nook and cranny. I mean, take for instance, the timber. Now, this particular timber, back by Daimler when they were handcrafting, would use one single piece of timber and then make a veneer out of just that single piece for one car. The purpose being that it keeps a consistent grain throughout the whole car. Lovely. And as I'm driving along in this car, I'm consistently reminded of all the things that I really like in Jaguars. I mean, it's no surprise because really underneath this is a Jaguar. And the thing that always rings true about a Jaguar is just the way they manage to balance out ride, handling, and just general performance. This car does not drive like a limousine. 
I mean, it's obvious that it's a big car, but it doesn't feel like it. It goes so well. It's, you, it's very hard to describe. You've just got to get in and drive it. I guess the best way to describe the ownership experience of a car like this is to view it as the kind of car that always makes an occasion of every trip. It will always turn ahead. And with all those seats it has, you can enjoy it with so many people. And then when you think about the history of Daimler and the golden era of motoring it represents, it makes you appreciate how far we have gone backwards in so many respects. It's a trip down memory lane every time you're in it, a celebration of excess. A car the world never really needed, but it was so much better off for having. And at just $39,990, you're not going to find another car that delivers this level of luxury, space, craftsmanship, attention to detail, sense of occasion, just to be quiet and drive. Oh, just certainly, sir, sorry, sorry. See you next week. <laughs>